But in terms of how to get to self-graphics, um, I <laughs> precisely because there was really not a Chicano art history program. And at Arizona, I did have great faculty um, who were supportive, but I had to do it all on my own. Did you find mentorship there? Um, I did find some. I did find some, but I didn't find it the kind of mentorship that you would need at the university. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was in Tucson where um, it coincided that Jose Galvez, who was one of the photographers in the Gata show, actually opened up a gallery in Tucson. And um, he hired my friend, Leanne. We were like the only, we were, yeah, the only two Chicanos in the program. And from day one, we hit it off. So we, and then we became neighbors and we've been best friends ever since. But she worked at the gallery. And so I ended up at that same time meeting Christina Cardenas, who um, was really good friends with um, uh, Louis Bernard. Louis Bernard was among the first Chicano photographers to actually get national recognition. He did a campaign with Maldev, and um, I think it was Maldev, um, in the 70s. And, um, and very much like Jose's work, documenting black and white photographs of the neighborhood, just everyday experiences. Um, so Christina is really good friends with him. Her husband, um, Goodness, what is her husband's name? Edward, it'll come to me. Um, and so I had interviewed Christina for a, for a class project. And she introduced me to you know, these kind of scenes that they were developing and really working collaboratively. And, um, and through that, um, we just, it was, you know, and a lot of it is just timing. We were all ready to do stuff like that. So uh, there was there were two young artists, Sochi Hill and Adriana Gallego, who were students of Alfred Quiroz. And Alfred Quiroz is a very well-known uh, Chicano artist based in Tucson. And he was teaching at the university. Uh, he, he just became full professor like three years ago, I think. And he was their teacher. So it was all of us kind of wanting, needing to create something that was Chicano Latino focus. Um, and so that's how it kind of all started. And that's where I found the mentorship. That's where I found the community. And it was really by doing, right? Uh, which seems to be kind of this theme with Chicano art, right? You just, you find the need, you do it. <laughs> um, so it was around 95 that Yolanda Gonzalez has a show at um, Jose's gallery. And she's an amazing artist, just an amazing person, and, and, and quite spirited and passionate. And she had been basically one of Sister Karen's um, students, for all intents and purposes. And she had just traveled to Scotland, um, and Self Help Graphics had produced a suite of. They had a whole their whole atelier print. You guys are familiar with the atelieres and the workshop, the silk screen prints. I read. I read, I read it. Okay. Um, the atelier, basically the workshop. It's um, you have a series of artists who are invited to do a limited edition print, silk screen print. Um, and so Sister Karen started this as part of um, one of the programs for self-help graphics. So Yolanda had come into self-help at a very young age, disappointed with Art Center, and found a home at self-help graphics to do her work. And so because of that, she had produced you know, this really beautiful silk screen print. And around the early, early to mid-90s, the um, the, uh, one of the government agencies, the United States um, government agencies that kind of tours work at the different embassies, um, had organized a show for self graphics. So, so their prints were on tour all over the world. One of the stops was Scotland, and then it coincided that, they, that in Scotland um, they did a uh, a Day of the Dead event. And so Yoli had just been there, so she was telling us all about it. She's telling us all about self graphics. 
And this is really how I got to know about Sunflow Graphics. It was really through Yoli until 1995. So it's been five years, right? Got up in 1995. And I'm in Tucson, I'm out in LA. So I had to still figure out what my thesis was. Again, my name is so much kind of art track. Uh, and so the way I came to my question was then trying to figure out, well, how is Chicano art defined within the museum? Because okay? that's really what my introduction was to, was the museum context. It wasn't a community center context. Um, I didn't grow with it. I didn't live with it. And so with that question in mind, then I went to look at how two of the first art collectives, Asconos Forum, were first exhibited in museums, and then try to see an alternative to that type of definition of Chicano art. And the alternative for me was Selfographics and the Ataya program, the Substitute Workshop program. Um, and so that's how I started conversations with Sister Karen and Tomas Benitez. And from that, um, we organized print workshops with the artists from Tucson to cell phone graphics. So we did a mono print workshop. Um, so there were artists and residents and we did that exchange and then we brought, so we brought artists from Tucson and from Phoenix because in Phoenix there was um, another art center called Chicanindio, uh, led at that time. Um, I can't, why am I spacing out these names? My database is glitching right now. Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, her name will come to me too. Uh, Dina, 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 Dina. That's Dina's house. Dina Lopez? No. Uh, oh, okay, it'll come to me. Anyways, Chica Nindio. Uh, she used to be the executive director for Chica Nindio. And, um, and so we brought artists who were based in Chica Nindio and in Tucson with our group and brought them to Sampo Graphics. So that was the little place. The little place to produce monoprint.